All right, so in this one, we are going to refactor our code to add one type of variance, and that's going to be quantities. So the number of quantities that can actually go into the cart. So it's not just one, because right now it's literally one, and we don't even have quantities in there. Uh, eventually, we'll have other variances that we would want to add into it, like colors and all that stuff. But those don't take the same calculations as adding to cart would, right? Or removing from cart, we still have to fix that too. But actually adding a cart with the number of quantities, because uh, that's going to be a little bit different. All right, so let's actually go ahead and look at our code. We're going to have to open up our models and take a look at our uh, cart models, actually. So models and cart. And we have this one called products. Now, this is okay for doing one at a time, but it's not okay for doing multiple quantities of any particular product. So we're actually going to have to change this on how it is. And so instead of using products, I'll leave it in here for now, but we will delete it. I'm going to change it to items and do models dot many to many field and items and then null equals to true and blank equals to true. All right. So now items is what we're going to be going after. And I want to actually call it cart items. And since it's going to be a class itself, we're going to call it cart item. So I'll do class. I'm making a new cart item now. So cart item models model. So this new class is going to be handling all of the items. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to make this class to handle products. So we can just copy this. But now instead of many to many, all we need to do is foreign key. And then the quantity. So the number of individual items for that product, right? So how many we want quantity models equals to integer field and default I'm going to say is one because every time we add something we should just at least default to one okay so now that we have this we have quantity and default this is a better start right so now we have these numbers um, and all it's doing is now going to hook in with those two things so I'll just do define unicode and it's going to take in self and it's going to return self dot product. I'm going to call this product actually not products product at title. All right. So now that we have this, we need to actually update our code. So let's go ahead and um, run a schema migration. And do we need maybe we should do um, a timestamp and all this stuff too, just in case we probably don't need to, but let's actually go ahead and do that. Uh, active, we definitely don't need to do because uh, we would just, if it's not something we want anymore in our cart, we would just remove it from our cart. So I can just go ahead and deactivate that. Uh, that's fine. And then another thing that we'll probably have to add at some point is possibly a user for our cart, just in case if we need a user, but for now we'll just leave it at this. All right, so let's do a schema migration. And all this is going to do is allow us to make the changes to the models. And so notice we already have some migrations there already. If you don't see this folder, you just delete this and delete this line and then convert it to south. Uh, but since that folder is there, we can actually run with south. So I'll do python manage.py schema migration cart carts, excuse me auto so that the app name oops mode is not right so it's model so models dot model gives me the error right there and just by looking at it I could tell oh I must have spelled model incorrectly and I did all right so now I did a schema migration so it added the model and then it added the many to many table for the uh, cart item stuff all right well that's good so now we can run um, migrate so python manage.py migrate carts. All right, so now it migrated the carts. Let's run the server again. Okay. So now we have to change things just a little bit. So if we go into views um, and update cart. So now instead of adding a product to it, we are going to add an item to it. And what we'll have to do also with update cart is eventually add an integer number. So some type of number that's going to come with that slug uh, versus how it's just a slug for now. But since we have a default, we'll just leave it at the default 
just to change this code so we don't get too complicated. All right, so now I have this product. I need to import my, my new cart item that I just created with models, right? So I need to import that. And we still got this product, so this is, this is good. We can still use this product. And now we just need to grab a cart item for it. So we'll just say cart item created equals to cart item dot objects dot get or create. So now it's creating a cart item for us, specifically for this cart. And then we will add product equals to product. Now we, I already see that there's a problem here that we might run into later. And that is this might, we might run into some issues because it's not actually gonna be that unique. So perhaps we want to actually link in the cart item to the cart itself, as opposed to having the items in the cart, we should have the cart in the item. So flipping these two around, uh, but we're not gonna do that yet. We will do that eventually, but just for now, just kind of thinking in terms of like, okay, what could possibly be wrong with this? Well, if I create a cart item and I get specifically a product, we might have some issues with different users and people, different people adding it because of this. So we'd wanna associate that cart ID that's associated to our session. So we'd wanna associate that cart to these cart items, right? As well as the product, because this will be unique to the session or to the user basically where this is not unique to anything except for the product. So let's just keep that in mind for now, but we're gonna continue on with this as it is, uh, just cause we just wanna change a little bit of stuff. So now that we have this cart item, it's gonna get or create it. So if it creates it, we could just say it's created. So it's gonna go, if created print, yay, um, or yeah. And all that's doing, so this call right here, get or create, sends back a tuple, which means, or a tuple, depending on how you pronounce it, which means that it's gonna be uh, the ID or the cart item object, and then true or false. Right, so that, that's what this is returning. Um, it returns something like this, uh, so or the model object, just so you can kind of understand why I would separate them like this. So setting these two variables allows us to pull it out of the tuple or tuple and do that. All right, so if it's created, it's basically it's gonna say if it's true or false, then it's a yeah. All right, so now that we have that, we can actually just go ahead and add this into our items. It's not gonna be any different than what we did already. We just change this to items and then we just change this to items. And then instead of adding the product, we're gonna add the cart item. That's it. That's all we would have to do as far as changing those two things together. All right, so that's, that's we've got it. Now to actually update it, uh, we would wanna do all of the items and then the products, so items at all so in the items at all, we have a product. So there's gonna be a bunch of items. So we'd wanna do dot product dot price now, cause all the items, it would be an instance of the cart item now, not in the product itself. So within the instance of the cart item, we can grab the product and then grab the price. So an instance of the cart item would include all of these things, right? So we can grab the product and then eventually the quantity as well as that. So that would set our total. Um, so with this, this is gonna be our new total for that. But in here, we could actually calculate our product price line total, our line total for our product. So line total for product equals to this number times item.product.quantity. And since we haven't changed how the quantities work yet, we can just leave it just like that. And I'm just gonna call this line total um, and then copy that, paste that there. And now this should actually allow us to figure out all of those things um, as far as the actual total for the cart, right? So I'm getting the product price and then I'm times it by the quantity and that'll be the line total for that particular product and then it would add that to the new total. So it's gonna go through all the card items and do that. And then last thing is items total. It's now not gonna be products count, but items count, 
right? So let's make sure again, it's items, right? So it's gonna be the count of items in here and the number of items that are there total. And then that should save everything. And then uh, we might have to change our cart view. We most likely will, um, but, or well, let's go ahead and do that so we can actually see it in action and our cart view. So now in cart items, instead of products all, we'll do item all, so item and item. So item dot product and then item dot product dot price and item dot product dot slug, that's it. All right, so now that we've changed all that, let's go ahead and try it out. Add to cart, it removed it from the cart. It was actually in the cart. Add to cart. Looks like we're having some issues here. So let's see what's going on in our views. We've got the product being, the cart item product was created and cart item products, oh, there it is right here. So if it's not in there, let's add it, right? So if it's not in item, well, we wanna do items. Um, so if cart item not in items now, it's not, it's no longer product. So this actually, this whole thing was wrong. So now it wasn't even adding it, it was just removing things. So let's go back in and we will check this out. So let's add a product here, go to add to cart. And product has no attribute quantity. That's a good sign. And that's this right here. And of course, that's because this is an item is an instance of the cart item, right? So that would mean that we'd have to use quantity in there instead of product quantity so it's just item quantity uh, so there's a little error there all right so let's try that again and we have zero we have zero items in our cart so let's see if we can add one again we'll do add and now it's there so it's it's almost the same but now it has a quantity so we can actually go into our view and add quantities so in uh, next to price uh, how about instead of just price or yeah, we can actually leave price in there. So we'll do TH and then we'll do QTY for quantity. So this is gonna give the uh, each product price, right? And then, then we wanna give the item price, right? So the item quantity, that is. And then we would eventually wanna add the line item total. Uh, so we don't have quantity, that's because we spelled it incorrectly. So eventually we'd wanna have the line item, the actual line item total, cause we have the price for the individual item and then the quantity of that item. And then we would eventually wanna have the entire total of that item. So now I need to refactor a few more things. So what I wanna do is I wanna add cart foreign key here. And I also wanna add a line total um, so we can use a line total instead of doing the calculation in the view so each cart item would have its own view all right so i want to discuss this one more time now the reason we want to use a cart foreign key versus this is because we want to associate the cart items to being a unique cart and that unique cart be happens because of how we set the cart or create the cart in the first place so every single time, this is gonna be a unique cart. If the session ends, the cart is, is not deleted, but it's no longer in the session. The cart is stored. We actually can go back and see old carts then, which is gonna be good for us so we can see what people add and, and don't actually buy. And then also we create a new cart when a new session happens. So every time there's gonna be a unique cart depending on the session. And then what we're gonna eventually do is after they purchase it, we're gonna make that cart inactive and then remove it from the session, uh, which means that it was purchased. And then if they come back and they wanna order something new, then they'll be able to do that. And then they'll come through and then cart items. So instead of creating, we can create a cart item, but we wanna make sure that it's a, a unique. And then how we're gonna do that is with a cart foreign key. And then we wanna add a line item total. So then in our view, uh, instead of adding all this stuff, we would just add in that line item total um, so we can keep as little logic out of our views as possible because there's no real reason for us to do this specifically um, unless unless we really have to, right? Um, we would much rather do something where it calculates it pretty much automatically. All right, so in the next one, we will actually start to do some of those things. 
Uh, if this is complicated at all, just let me know. Um, hopefully it's not too bad. It's it's very similar to what we've done before, but we just need to kind of get rid of these couple line items and make our cart a, just a little bit smarter. Um, but overall, uh, the refactoring should have made a lot of sense to you because we just changed only little things here and there. All right, so we'll see you in the next one.